So what is an engineer? An engineer is someone who fixes things. They fix stuff and they make stuff, I think. I have a problem. I call them in and they swoop in and fix it up for me and they peace out. And who is an engineer? One of my professors one time told me that you can always tell an engineer because if, the, if you were at a dinner party and you put a black box in the middle of the table and didn't say one word, it'd be the engineer who'd reach over and try and open it or figure out what it was. Everybody else on the table would just assume they weren't supposed to mess with it. We're the curious ones, the ones who aren't satisfied with being presented an answer. We need the why, the how it ticks. We revel in the process of finding that answer. Then we take what's there, make it more functional, more efficient. An engineer is a fixer, a troubleshooter, a solver. Our department is an amalgamation of talents and backgrounds and skills and knowledge. We're broadcast support, we're IT, we're facility support, we're the fixers. It's been said, and other departments really like this one, that we can go from toilets to transmitters, and it's true. Not because we're plumbing wizards or super into toiletry or anything like that. It's because we see and or we're presented with a problem and our task is to find the solution. And then from there, the task is to find a better one and a better one and so on. There's no getting comfortable in engineering because the job is ever changing just as technology is ever changing. 15, 20 years ago, many engineers worked at the component level. Think circuit boards or capacitors or relays. Today, we're still repairing broadcast equipment, but we don't take it to that extent. Busted cable, rewire, broken connector, resolder. I have been lucky to work with engineers who still remember the olden days because that level of institutional knowledge is irreplaceable. When I first got into engineering, a lot of what I was learning and what the my fellow engineers were teaching me was a lot of component diagnosis. We were working on circuit boards. I was learning, you know, the soldering and, and fixing of circuit boards. We were we were doing that kind of, we were still working on tape machines and fixing them ourselves. There was a lot of the electronics that we were diagnosing at the component level and, and fixing ourselves. You can't get the feel of what your control room, your newsroom, your sales staff needs from a book. You get that from experience. So let me ask you a few questions. Have any of you driven out of Gastonia on Route 321? Have you seen those three towers in the distance? You know what they are? Those are television transmission towers, specifically ours and our competitors. Want to guess how tall they are? 2,000 feet. For reference, the Bank of America Tower in Uptown Charlotte is just under 1,000 feet. Need another visual? The Eiffel Tower? 1,083 feet. So each of those towers is nearly twice as high as the Eiffel Tower. One of our jobs as broadcast engineers is to maintain the structure and functions related to the tower, the antenna, and the transmitter that powers it. So what kind of tasks might that entail? Things like filing quarterly reports to the FCC about the integrity of the structure. Who is the FCC? They are the Federal Communications Commission, and simply put, they're the agency granting us the right to broadcast, and they can just as easily revoke that right. Broadcast engineers do a lot of reporting to the FCC. Every station must stay compliant, otherwise you risk losing your FCC license to broadcast. And trust me, that would be very bad. So what else might an engineer do at the tower site? How about notifying the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, every time a tower light goes out? Why do we do that? Because those lights are safety devices used to identify our tower and warn pilots to steer clear. The official notification of an outage starts a communication chain with the airport that pilots need to avoid that particular GPS location. The other big thing at the site is the transmitter itself. This is a conglomeration of hundreds of pieces of equipment working together to ready the high voltage power and the RF, that's radio frequency, that then pushes energized RF all the way up to the top of the 2000 foot tower where a 30 foot antenna radiates the signal throughout the Charlotte market so you can pick it up on the TV in your living room. Many of us began in newscast production or master control. Both of these entry points are shrinking due to the nature of the broadcast industry. Others found their way in from the ground floor. I got my start in television when I was in college at the time I was studying to be an audio engineer and decided that the job prospects in television looked a little bit better. Uh, so I got involved with a club on campus that put on a newscast uh, each week live 
and uh, learned all about engineering and uh, decided I really enjoyed it. And so when I graduated, I uh, looked for a job and found one in uh, television. Or through IT administration. There is a strong IT component to what we do. Television has changed rapidly, and nearly everything we do now, every piece of equipment we install, is IP-based, requires some form of network connectivity, firewall port configuration, security patching, switch configuration, and when we're not installing or maintaining equipment, we're busy providing help desk support to the entire staff for their PCs, laptops, phones, and the dozens of software apps they use daily. In the past, you'd need, say, a background in. I come from, like I said, a chemistry background, math background, but also double majored in English. Or broadcast production. I earned my bachelor's degree in audio engineering and landed a job in Raleigh at a news station there working the audio board for the AM news. But as automation takes over many station roles, today's engineers have to think bigger. Go heavy with IT, you'll need it. But don't skip on the circuitry and pinouts because if we can fix it, we do. You'll need to know your way around a computer and a camera. Have a background in electronics and know that it's only the beginning because engineering isn't just one type of system, it's all systems. So what makes a great engineer? You just need to be well-rounded. You have to have a thirst for knowledge. And, and in this day and age, is 100% hands-on. I mean, getting some sort of IT background, um, everything now is server-based, everything is IP-based. So you have to have some sort of base knowledge. Just know that we will fine-tune the rest. Certifications are a plus. Think A+, plus, CCNA, Security+. Plus. Don't neglect the soft skills, communication, teamwork, organization, because as I said, we're the fixers. And sometimes that means bringing in people with more expertise, whatever it takes to get the job done the right way.